<laughs> okay, so um, together with Douglas, uh, Giuseppe, and uh, Graham, we went for the, the burger trucker. I decided to go for the, the burger trucker purely based on the fact that I could save a couple of pounds on burgers myself. So, so we went for the burger trucker, and it was Jared that was needing a burger trucker. So. Who's Jared? <laughs> <laughs> Jared's skint as f***, that's who Jared is. <laughs> I think, yeah, he looks quite skint there. Um, so I think on the planning stage, we, did, we didn't have a clue who Jared was, we thought it was a, a big guy, hence the, the big guy drawn here. Um, but I kind of refactored that when we went on to the slides. <laughs> so we've got Jared. He's in Edinburgh, he's a sofa instructor, he's 25, makes 30 grand a year, he's single. His behaviours, he's a burger fanatic, he loves a deal, he uses the phone through the day while on the go, he likes to explore the city centre for burger deals, and he watches every penny he spends on his lunches. His needs and goals, a way of finding burger deals by day, type, and eatery. He wants to find the deals while on the go, out and about in Edinburgh. He wants to have easy to use buttons on screen for ease of use on the go, on the move. And he wants the most amount of burgers for his buck. So this is the kind of user needs that we had when we were writing out on Friday last week when we were doing the planning stage. I kind of refactored it on here. So um, as a guy on the move, he wants to access deals quickly and easily. He wants so that he finds, or he needs, he's not fiddling with his phone. As a frugal individual, he wants to find the best deals for a given day. These are the day, eatery, and type. So he wants to find the best deals for a given day, just so that he's not spending more than he needs to when times are hard. As a burger connoisseur, he wants to find the best deals for a specific eatery, so that he can find a variety of different quality burgers and won't break the bank doing so. As a fussy eater, he wants to find the best deals for a certain type of burger so that he can get the type of burger that he is in the mood for for no extra cost. And as a single guy, he doesn't want any bog offs or buy and get one freeze or anything like that. He just wants the most amount of burger that he's saving. So, yeah, that's, it. that's kind of explaining that. So, he isn't finding deals that are more specific when more than one person is finding. So, um, I picked one of the, the user journeys. So he wants to be able to view all the deals by burger type. So I'm going to go into too much detail here. So he opens the browser on his phone. He goes to the burger tracker homepage. The system response is to load all relevant files and display the homepage styled with some CSS. He clicks a box that reads deals by burger. Sonata uses the relevant view.erb page to display using HTML. He wants to click on either the cheeseburger or chicken burger icon. I made it simple, I gave every eatery a chicken burger or a chicken burger, that's his lot. Um, so, I think the site forms a get request to the database to get all the deals for that burger type. He then performs, he ends up going on to use all available deals for burger type, showing eatery, day, and deal name. So the system response for that is, uses the information from the database to display with HTML style with CSS. He then goes back to a page to then view deals with the different burger types. So, for instance, he could have been viewing the deals with the cheeseburger, and then he wants to go and view the deals with the, che the chicken burger. The system response is to display burgers options as big icons to select from. And then he would then view the, he end up views the alternative deals for the various other burger types. And then the system's response is uses the information from the database to display with HTML style with CSS, the same as here. And then he's found the deal he wants and he closes down the browser, browser so the, the system response knows to close the database and get on with it. So um, this is obviously from Friday when we were doing a bit of, a bit of planning on the whiteboard through there. I've kind of put that in simple forms here for you. So we've got eateries, days, burgers, we've <coughs> got deals. So we've got a one to many here, a one to many here, and a one to many here. And notice there's no connection between eateries and deals. 
and within deals we only have a day ID and a burger ID. So that comes into place later on. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to be looking to looking for it to look like. We wanted the header, nav bar, few of the deals that we're able to click on, some text and images. <coughs> so I'll just I'll get back to my slide in a minute, but I'll just show you the site just now. So this is the site. We've got Jared's Burger Traffic. We've got all eateries here. List of all the eateries. We've got all the burgers. We've got all the deals. And if we go into any of these options, we could we could edit any eatery, we could change its name. Same with the deals, the burgers. Change anything we want. If we want to view the deals by burger type, we've got a cheeseburger or a chicken burger. So if I select cheeseburger there, we're getting only the deals for cheeseburgers. The seven deals, the seven days, the seven different eateries. So I gave every eatery one cheeseburger and one chicken burger. <coughs> There's only seven deals in total. So each eatery only either has a deal on a chicken burger or a cheeseburger any given day. Um, what can I go on to? This is, if you remember, it says um, the deals only had a day ID and a burger ID. So it was kind of complicated in the fact that when I wanted to display deals by cheeseburger, I didn't want it to go look for the, um, the the burger ID because then that would display me all the burgers. I wanted it to display the burgers by name. So that was where some inner joints came out of place and I'm going to that in a bit more detail in a minute. So um, I'll just skip back to my, my slide just now. So I don't know if you could probably see that, it's a bit small. But um so the seven wrestle this is one of the things that um for my burger deals controller caused me some problem just because I wasn't systematic in the approach where I was setting them out in the order that it should be and that came up that become apparent quite uh, late on. Um so yesterday I spent a lot of time refactoring the seven wrestle routes. We've got index, new, create, show, edit, update delete. These are the deals by burger type, these are the deals by day, and these are the deals by eatery. So I think um, when I first started putting it together, um, I just started putting everything in place and everything kind of seemed like quite jumbled up and it wasn't really, really readable, and especially even trying to explain to some of the instructors where my code was and where, what it was meant to look like. It was kind of confusing me sometimes, so I spent a lot of time on refactoring that code, make it a lot easier to read for anybody else that was wanting to go into the code and read it. So, if you remember when it says in the, the deals table, there was only the day ID and the burger ID. There was nothing even to do with eateries. So this is the, the inner joins that I needed to do um, to be able to get back the burgers by burger name. So that was that one. This was the same deal, but for the day name and this is the, the, the one, the inner join, that create, caused me a lot of problem. Um, this is getting the deals back by eatery. And this was an inner join with another inner join. So yeah, I kinda, that was one of the things that, reading back, even though in the query quotes, um, it kind of reads something back to front and it doesn't really make sense a lot of times, but going over it and over it in my head, it's starting to make sense now. And that's, that's the end of my, my slide, so hopefully that wasn't too long. Thank you very much. Uh, what did you enjoy the most for the project? Um, Lunch. <laughs> research. I think, um, yeah, the, the research came quite late on when I actually found out who Jared actually was. I was thinking he's this big massive guy. Um, no, I think I think the the, whole, the thing that I did actually learn the most, the most, even though it sounds quite cliche, is how much I need to just take a step back from 
what I'm actually trying to do. Like, we've done a lot of the planning on last Friday, um, but then I think I went, I just jumped straight ahead and started doing lots of code, putting lots of like uh, models in place, putting the controls in place, putting views in place, and I, I wasn't taking a, a sliced approach to the, the, the whole project and thinking, right, before, before I get ahead of myself, let's just take one thing at a time. Let's work on this, make sure I've got this in place, make sure this works, and then we'll move on to something else. So um, I think that's probably the biggest thing I can take away from it. Yeah. Well, like a lot of people say that, you know, either at the end of the course or the end of the project, all oh, right, now I feel ready to do that project. It's <laughs> so almost like the lessons you learn by the end of it would set you up perfectly if you had to start it from mm. scratch again. It sounds like that's probably true in this case. Yeah. Um, I think, it, like, for me, in my head, for some reason, like, I don't know, but just the way I work, like, um, working on the back end all the time, it's like I couldn't really grasp what the, the site was going to look like. So when I got stuck over the weekend on the back end code, that's what I ended up doing a bit, of, a bit of CSS and HTML, just so that it gave me something to work with, something that I could see working, something that I could see um, that's got a bit of functionality to it, which kind of helped um, a lot of times, like you guys are saying, like something you better concentrate on the back end, but sometimes we bit of front end works better for me, uh, just so that I've got something there that I can see. Um, and yeah, sorry, what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I forgot, I'm moving on. Um, I, I think you're totally right, that's totally valid. I think you just have to be careful that you don't like write loads of back end yeah. stuff and then kind of half finish it and go yeah. to the front end. If you're going to take that approach, you take this kind of sliced approach where yeah. you write like one route and like write a very small mm. bit of server side code and then go all the way through. So it's a, mm. it's a, you might say you kind of thin slice all the way through. So you can either take it like get everything done back end, everything done front end, or you can do a little bit back end. It's just, if you mix and match, that's when you get in trouble, yeah. where you like get halfway through your back end, you're like, oh, I'm bored, go, and then you get lost in it. You have to kind of be mm. systematic. I think I was, that was quite a bad, like during the week when uh, I was speaking to Joe and he says, well, have you got all your crud actions in place? And I kind of looked through my code and I was looking through my methods and I was thinking, actually, well, I don't. So uh, like uh, that was his advice to get your Trello board open, make sure you've got all your crud actions, your whole, if you've got three different tables, make sure you've got 12 crud actions in place, make sure you, you've got create, read, update, and delete for all of them, then move on. Move them across every time you've got you've done that specific mm -hmm. action, mm -hmm. and then just keep it at that small small chunks at a time. So that's the kind of thing that I started working on midway through the week, which really helped. Yeah. I think that's one of the key things that everybody can take away from this: that if you felt like it's a bit chaotic and it's a bit hard to keep track of time or keep track of the tasks that you have to do, take a small chunk, focus on that one, see it through. That gives you extra momentum after that because you get that feeling of accomplishment. Cool, I did something and then you don't get lost and then you know what you've done you've done already and keep track of on either Trello or in your notebook wherever it doesn't matter just keep track of it somewhere that helps immensely awesome Any more? Any questions? No. Cool. excellent thank you very much